Yeah, and uh, actually, Hard Random speaking during a pause. It's a no-no, ladies and gentlemen, and they're going to lose a band for it. So this is your lineups for the band so far as Ince, they're looking for their final one, and then Smurf going to be taking his first pick. And you can see there in the last pick column for Ince, that was their 18 and a half minute game where Mikhail got a triple kill at about five minutes in. So. Yeah, against KLG, they were able to really run away with that one. So it was a good momentum building match for them there. Actually, not very many reactionary bans coming through. Just Lee Sin taken away from Revolta and LeBlanc being taken away from Tokas. But finally, they get to have a look at the Morgana at least. Demonke might play it, but more than likely that will be a top lane Morgana. Yeah, Smurf going to be able to take that into the top lane, but Yang sort of will be able to pick whatever he likes. Morgana, not too much pressure in that top side of the map, and Revolta, that Lee Sin ban is there, but he's got the entire rest of the jungle to pick from, and Rek'Sai's available. I think that's a massive one, but Gragas as well. He's seen so much success this tournament. Yeah, so he has the Gragas to pick up. I think Gragas is probably the highest priority currently on this patch to be able to get into your lineup. Just jungles well early and then transitions well into Ooh. kind of a catch champion late game. There's a huge yawn coming through from some of the <laughs> INTZ members. Nunu being considered here. Maybe they're going for a little bit more of a build up Macau composition and how he played Jinx yesterday. Doesn't sound like a bad choice. Yeah, certainly not. But I would have expected something to do with maybe a Rek'Sai pick away as Revolta is going to switch over to it. They go to the Janna as well. And I like this because Symphony, he's been relying on that Rek'Sai pick. Yeah, he certainly has. He really does prioritize that one. Also plays Sejuani okay, but that's hard into a Rek'Sai. So from here, I don't know what hard random really can go for. They have hovered a Lulu. All of a sudden, if they have a hyper carry locked in, that is a very good raise the uh, AD carry comp. If it's a Cogmore, I'll, I'll even allow you to call this one a Juggermore. Really? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Let's let's not let's not go crazy. All right. You know that I love to be able to throw throw around words that don't necessarily make sense. Kira, thinking about the Jinx here, they want to pick it away from Macau. Moving over to the Callista, we'll see what they do decide on. Kira was hovering the Ezreal. That would have been a pickup most likely for the mid lane there, as Kira more than happy to play that one. Yeah, it certainly is, but it looks like it is a Lulu Jinx. So no Jugger more, but a Protect the Jinx co uh, combo coming out here. Very good late game scaling already on the side of Hard Randoms, and looks like Inns happy to just commit to this mid game. They've gone for a Graves Hover right now. Graves or Lucian deals okay with Jinx in lane, able to bully her around her a little bit early. Yep. Although I'm really not convinced anyone outright beats Jinx because she can rotate around the map so well. 2v1, she's probably the best 2v1 AD carry in the game. Crushes through waves, crushes through structures, but also doesn't have much AoE if she's in the minigun form, so does freeze up relatively well. Yeah, it isn't sort of gated by that sort of Tristana factor with the explosive shot as far as that uh, AoE is concerned. Able just to uh, last hit those creeps very, very slowly if she feels like it. In so they're still hovering the graves. Tok has yet to make up his mind as Ari is available. Played a fantastic one in their last showing, of course. Did have a lot to do with other factors as Macau now considering a Cogmore back to the Tristana. And this is a very interesting lineup so far, but I like the Trist. Yeah, fighting fire with fire. And wow, straight away, Ezreal insta locked in there for Kira. Oh man, the last so, pick Gragas too. That's going to be either a support Lulu or a support Morgana. Support Lulu. Definitely support Lulu. Demonko loves playing that one. Yeah, so see Demonko pick up Lulu in the bottom lane. Lulu Jinx, not the greatest 2v2 lane, although against Macau and Jockster, probably going to be able to run into the Tristana. Uh, Jana. Yeah, well, we'll see not exactly how this fantastic lane Fantastic synergy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, of course, Jana just has sort of mediocre synergy with almost anyone who has an AD scaling ability for auto attacks. So we'll see how that one goes as Ince considering a Cogmore potentially for the mid lane. And I'm surprised that we haven't seen more of this one because Luden's Echo Cogmore in the mid lane is disgusting. Yeah, it's what I call obnoxious. Uh, yeah. You really struggle against it. You can just go tear into Luden's Echo and all of a sudden he throws out lots and lots of damage. and. It even gives him some wave clear. It's very, very hard to deal with. Throw in a six item Rylai's as well, and it just does not get any better for you. And that is exactly what they have gone for. So some good peel back coming through here from Ince. They will have some chase potential as well with Tristana if anyone gets low from Cogmore. What about the Siege coming through from this lineup though? They've got Tristana who is the queen of destroying turrets and a Cogmore who is literally a Siege unit. Yeah, it certainly is, but 
I, I can see exactly where you're going with, with that. It's very easy to siege up those turrets. You have Jana as well to blow people back in if you are too hard engaged on. But I think that there is still a fair amount of wave clear coming through here from our hard random. They'll be able to drop the pool, just use a couple of Jinx rockets. I don't think the creeps will get too far underneath the turret this time around. Yeah. Well, we'll see how hard random deal with it because, of course, they want to be sieging as well. They've got this double AD comp. They've got, of course, the Essence Flux with the Jinx as well. I mean, that's another thing that we haven't really spoken about is the fact that Ezreal can even augment the AD carry. Yeah, it certainly can. Can speed her up, make her nice and good there. I'm surprised they didn't go with a, Lulu, uh, a Nunu in this composition, actually, in the uh, jungle, just because of how yeah. much they could have buffed up the Jinx. They went with some disengage instead. Also helps out the siege, shoving people off the turrets. But a little bit of a strange pick there. The Gragas, very strong at the moment. So as a standalone, not bad. Just doesn't meet the composition as well as you would have thought the Nunu would. Although, I guess Nunu doesn't offer too much CC in the early stages of the game. That might have been a thought. And the explosive cast, fantastic in a siege? Yeah, yes and no. Uh, explosive cast, fantastic in a siege. But Nunu always offers CC. The snowball is really good as a single target CC. It's actually mm. very hard to run through. Tristana not going to deal with that one great. And as soon as level 6 hit, he has a uh, big zoning potential that comes through from absolute zero. So they do have some CC coming through from... Gragas, but Nunu's no slouch in that regard either. Yeah, well, that's a good point. And he is able to eat through that jungle relatively quickly at the same time. And as far as this jungle matchup is concerned, Gragas versus the Rek'Sai, is Revolta going to really move around this map as quick, as freely as he has in previous games against this Gragas? Gragas will have a great burst gank as we do jump onto the Rift, but Revolta should be able to dictate the pace from there. The flash body slam is huge, but Revolta also has the Barrow and the knock-up that can come through. Of course, so should be fairly even, but give a slight edge over to Revolta. Well, we'll see how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. As we do hop onto the Rift, Hard Random taking on Ince here. Hard Random on the blue side for the first game of this best of five series in the semifinals as we kick off our fourth day here of the IWCI. And we do have Hard Random actually as a full five-man squad heading through here. There's pings all across this map as... Ints might be able to sandwich them in their base. Yeah, they might look to do it, definitely, or at oh. least get them when they come back out. I don't know whether they've been spotted. Who, Ints or Hard Random? Ints. Ints haven't been spotted. No, definitely not. Well, the, this could be ridiculous. Oh, Kira. Fire a Q. He got it. He got it, but there's the Twisted Advance to come through. Domonko's getting burnt down by that Ignite, but flashes away nicely. Joska. Oh my gosh, I would have expected someone to die, but everyone on Hard Random, they do make it out alive. Yeah, they certainly do. And now Hard Random, they actually have a very good level one. So Ince, they lose the surprise. Only a flash, two flashes burnt for an Ignite. So definitely in favor of Ince, they now have position over the map. But they need to be careful because Morgana, Ezreal, not to mention Lulu and Jinx, all have pretty good level ones. Yeah, well, the Dark Binding, of course, is fantastic in that situation. You have to think if it was Hard Random who were waiting in that brush and managed to get that amount of, uh, of a surprise attack off, then it could have been very different. As, Ki as Yang, another twisted advance. Kira loses half of his health instantly. Mystic shots onto Yang. They're not going to be starting off the blue just yet. In fact, they are, as Symphony is around here. This is Brave coming through from Symphony. The Collapse can still come through. He's got a support player coming up as well. This will be a 2v3, but blue buff does a lot of damage, level 1. Yeah, Revolta actually tanking that one up a little bit too much there. Blue buff's had enough. He's been soft leash. Yeah, there's Twisted Advance again as Demonko doesn't have a flash from before. As you remember, Revolta, he's down here, but Demonko able to pick up the shield from the inner turret, and he's going to be okay. And Man, this weird situation continues. Yeah, but it's going to continue for a long time. And the beneficiary, Smurf, he packed up left, already level two. In fact, he might just be able to shove out, teleport in, and kill everyone. Potentially here. They do have a ward. There's a flash twisted advance now. Nice howling gale. But Yang, he's getting burnt down. Will have to get out. Glitterlands doesn't quite find the mark. As Symphony's going to flash. Yang doesn't have anything. The passive going to do some work. But first blood goes to Damonko. And Joxa now in trouble as well. Kira comes over. Nice flash away from the Mystic Shot as Lex is coming in. The heal from Macau as he heads down here as well. And it's a party around this blue buff. Yeah, spawn. it certainly is. But finally, hard random take it. And Int overcommitted because... Morgana's just sat in the bottom lane, didn't even use the teleport. You feel if Smurf had have come up, would have been able to rock something in there. But instead, they get Yang behind. It's a level one versus a level three now. And 
That's going to be very, very painful for the Maokai early. Yeah, most certainly. Tokas, though, was still hanging around in that mid lane, so he's going to have the advantage there by a little bit. But, of course, Kira not losing out on too much apart from all of his summoner spells. Symphony able to clear out these wolves, and Revolta heading towards the red buff. Well, hasn't Revolta hasn't up taken a camp yet. Yeah. Revolta is very far behind. Unfortunately for Gragas, he did go barrel as well as E. So he's not going to have the best jungle clear ever, but he'll be completely fine. J Gragas is very good at clearing out the jungle. And Revolta actually started his Q there in the jungle. We see a lot of Rek'Sai's not opt for that one, instead going for the t uh, W coming through as well. Beautiful wow. jumpers over both of them here on the top side of the map. Lex getting some follow-up damage there with those rockets. Jockster, some auto attacks coming through there as well. Nets him a bit of gold as Macau quite low, and they've been focusing Demonko. Demonko's actually got focus from everyone across this map, but... What he's got for it is first blood. Yeah, he certainly does. So he'll be able to go back, pick up a sight stone whenever he wants to at about the four-minute mark. He's got a fair bit of gold at the moment from some auto attacks coming through there as well. You can never underestimate oh, yeah. how quickly spell thieves start stacking up if you're auto attacking someone for the first three minutes of a game. And he's most certainly been able to do that. Symphony able to pick up both of his buffs now as well. Has Horizontal the, jungling. Has gone the uh, skirmishes save... Wow. Has gone the Skirmisher's Saber Atlas for Nailed a little it. bit of extra dueling potential in the early game as well. Maybe expecting Rek'Sai to be aggressive on him. Well, if he is going to be able to do that as well, I mean, Rek'Sai far behind. So despite the fact that Rek'Sai generally known as being a fantastic skirmishing jungle, And jungler, he's going for an early invade onto the blue buff. He was spotted there by a ward. Sees it has not been started up yet. Might actually go for a revisit, but you're right. He's much stronger than Revolta right now because he has buff. Revolta only has the red. Might be able to make that invade successful, but he does back away. Yeah, Revolta though able to even this one out. Of course, Rek'Sai's clear very, very strong. And you mentioned that Symphony did take a little bit of a hit on that regard. Lex able to get some auto attacks down onto these minions. Doesn't do as well as he would have otherwise liked. And it is going to be the CS advantage for Macau here on the top side. Yeah, it certainly is. And you mentioned how in the mid lane, Kira was falling oh, behind a little bit. Cute denial. He's been able to catch completely up in CS, even though he was the one that went into the jungle to help out. So that's against Cogmore. The other thing against yeah. Cogmore is the very late second buff coming through from Revolta. So his blue going to be denied for a pretty long time. There, Tokas just needs to keep farming up with that tier. Yeah, Lex actually, the Whimsy Shield coming through. Either Storm versus Whimsy up here on the top side. Monko heading back now has that sight stone as you mentioned, so able to provide as much vision as Hard Random would like. They've had a great start this game, 700 gold now in the lead as Tokas trying to get some vision down. Nice pink ward there below the red buff. He's going to let them know whether Gragas is going to be around. And there's a pink on the top side as well. That's an interesting one. Yeah, so able to get a couple of pinks in their jungle. Maybe they were just looking for uh, any early invade that was going to come through from Gragas. A little bit worried about one, that one. He, of course, can go over the uh, Baron Wall and then walk around the backside. So maybe they think that it's going to be there for a very long time and just will give them good vision of where Gragas will be as Symphony. He's been spotted out. Yeah, speaking of good vision here, wow, that was half of Symphony's health with two spells. Yeah, so able to get that done, although Tokas takes the return in the mid lane, has to start healing up, but he's got a lot of consumables with the flask as well as some biscuits. Not doing too badly. Actually, Revolta answering the Skirmisher Saber with one of his own here. A lot of challenges to come out of these junglers as Lex is going to get the explosive shot on his head. Not too many auto attacks buffing that one up, so not going to hit him for too much. Macau's trading damage actually very, very strong. Revolta coming through for a bit of an invade here. Doesn't find himself a Gromp, and there's a lot of vision around here. Might be looking for, hard for a random. dive actually in the top lane, or at least a gank through there, but he won't get it, so he'll just pick himself up a Rift Scuttler instead. And Tokka's doing very well in this mid lane against Ezreal, who should be able to bully around lots of mid laners early, but seem kind of find. Can't seem to find a foothold on the AP Cog. Yeah, can't quite get there, of course. Cogmore, now that he's hit level 6 as well, pretty strong as... Ooh, Lex, not going to get found by that pre-seeker. Yeah, you have to stand on that tunnel now because he can come back to it very, very quickly. So they're able to take that one out. Good work there by Demonko. But Lex, he's starting to get bullied a little bit in this lane. And we said we didn't really see the synergy in the bottom lane between Tristana and Janna, but apparently it's there. Most certainly. Of course, Janna just... Bit of a mental champion anyway, and haven't seen too many aggressive rocket jumps. We've had discussions about this just recently, Spawn, of course. I do like maxing that rocket jump very, very early on. Of course, no one else in the world does. Yep, so uh, AP Tristana fell out of favor a while ago, and you're trying to bring it back in an ED AD form. But 
I like to call myself a hipster in League of Legends. Built far too many Ginsu's Rage Blades. Cow though, continuing to clear out this wave. Top lane slash bottom lane, duo lane. Going to be heading back to base here for hard random, and Int's just going to shove this wave in and do the same. BF Sword picked up for Lex. But even more will be able to be picked up by Macau. He's built himself Massive nearly a 20 CS advantage. CS advantage. At only the nine minute mark, as Kira picks up his blue buff, that's going to help very much against the Cogmore, who's not going to have his available for quite some time still. And we should see that right now, Ezreal should start shoving in this lane relentlessly. Oh, yeah. Tokas, though, does have the Aether Wisp, so it is exactly what you mentioned there. Tear into the Luden's Echo. And we'll see whether it is as devastating as uh, it, it can be. Legitimately, probably the best synergy you can get with Luden's Echo, apart from maybe Ari, but I'm still going to give it to Gogmore. Well, he's a beautiful butterfly, so I give it to him anyway. He's going to be able to clear out some creeps here in the mid as well. Does it nicely as that Caustic Spittle comes out to pick up the last one. Does Caustic Spittle also have an AP ratio? Yeah, Caustic Spittle, all of his kid has an AP ratio. Oh, cool. He's an AP laner, so people just figured out that his W is an absolute joke when you have attack <laughs> speed, so they started building him AD. Well, it has worked out. Of course, Jugmore is a pretty ridiculous team comp. Cogmore himself does ridiculous damage as an AD carry, but Symphony's going to discover... A pink ward here on the bottom side as the Ents are going to back away. Lanes are going to reset. No dragons being considered at all here at the 10 minute mark. Fairly late. Yeah, that's very late. And especially because both Revolta as well as Symphony would love to be able to solo that one out and sneak it away. But there was a lot of, I guess, focus on the early Scuttle Crab. And that seems to have dissuaded both junglers from getting that done. Yeah, Scuttlecrab now available here. Revolta not going to be taking that one down as Blue Buff is almost available here for Tokas. That's going to make him completely Dang obnoxious. Is completely back up to Symphony. Uh, Smurf, by the way, who was able to get like the first three levels for free in his lane. So credit to the Int's top laner for being able to stick in that one. Of course, Morgana not really known for her lane bullying potential, but still very impressive if you can stand up to someone two levels above you. Yeah, and the game sort of equalized almost completely after that fairly ridiculous level one business. Symphony, oh, actually going to almost catch out the flash there as Tokas is able to get over the explosive cast. Should have been able to catch out the flash, actually. If he had a flash himself, he would have been able to be in range to get the knock-up of the body slam. Didn't want to commit to it. Instead, just gets the summoner spell for free. But I think they could have got a little bit more against Cogmore. Yeah, decide not to. Sort of playing a little bit more conservatively. Cow in this bottom side, continuing with a bit of a CS advantage. Wow. Rocket jump very aggressively onto Lex here as he gets polymorphed on the bottom side. Chompers not going to work out, Teleport. but that explosive shot doing some work. Smurf wants to come in, does have the Soul Shackles. Jockster flashes away, but takes the damage. Super Mega Death Rocket nets them the kill, and that Dark Binding not going to quite find uh, Lex there on the bottom side. Macau, I apologize. And Demonko and Lex able to turn that one around really nicely. Yes, they're able to turn it around. They got the teleport through from their top laner and able to pick up a kill. Unfortunately, might not be able to get too much else because already Rek'Sai is closing in. Uh, Revolta as well as Jang in the wings. They want to start something. Yeah, knockup is available here for Revolta. Doesn't get it there under Demonko as the Black Shield comes through. Yang gets caught by the Chompers as Macau's found Symphony. The explosive shot doing some work, but Macau not wanting to aggress too far in. So all of a sudden, now it is Ints with the advantage over on Dragon, even though they were the ones that lost the fight. Smurf once again trying to come in to poke Dark Vine. Especially if it's got a couple of extra points and does ridiculous damage at this part of the game, but he misses it out and they'll be able to grab that one for free. Potentially here. Symphony is round the side. Preseeker finds him. Hard random should give this up. Oh, they've been able to force them back off. That is a lot of damage coming through. Yeah, True Shop Bar is doing some work there are here so as Yang's many taking it up completely. on the side of Hard Random. Ince is sticking with this one, but all of a sudden, Hard Random, they look like they want to continue to fight. Yeah, and the Dragon does not know what it wants to do as well. It's been resetting in and out of this fight. Ince have been tanking it up for so incredibly long. Explosive cast coming through there just for some damage as it's down to about 1,000 health. Lex now. 
was looking at that Howling Gale, but it is going to be Revolta securing away the Dragon. Yeah, so a lot of... Uh, that was a very long standoff over the Dragon, but in the end it is picked up by Int, so they get the first major objective of the map. Although they are about a thousand gold behind just because of the two kills that have been able to be picked up by Hard Random. Yeah, and Hard Random, despite falling behind here on the bottom side of the map, are certainly doing well as mid lane completely even. And Lex, with that kill, is going to mean that this Jinx in a very nice position. Tok is now in trouble. True Shot Barrage coming through, but Kira just takes a turret shot for it. And Tok is going to be out ahead home. As yeah, so able to get out of there, as we see Tristana continuing to shove in in this bottom lane. There's no teleport gang coming through, so there's not really much risk for Mikau. You can see the river is lit up with wards, and that's why they feel so safe doing this. Symphony is very low on the top side of the map as well, so not really much danger as Smurf now looking for a gank in the mid lane. Yeah, Revolta underground, looking for a knock up there. As Dark Binding lands, Revolta, you are so dead, and Kira easily picks up that kill, and Smurf patiently waited and got what he was looking yeah, for. Yeah, that was just an outright bait coming through. Rek'Sai must have known something was going on because now they're going for it again as well. Yeah, Dark Binding tries to be found as Super Mega Death Rocket actually coming through. They were really expecting Smurf to land that one. Yeah, apparently so. So Lex throws out the ultimate, not able to grab anything. That was cute, though. That was a really good shot. Mm. Although I guess, you know, Smurf may have just pinged out where he was hoping to land the bind. But it missed. So someone must have missed. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate. But Zap just going to be tanked up there by Macau. He's being doing fantastic things as far as sort of denying... Never outright won this lane. Apart from the kill that went over to Demonko, and then there was another kill from a very good teleport coming through, which both aren't really their fault. 20 CS up, they've taken down nearly the turret. There's so much pressure on this bottom side of the map that now Symphony is ignoring the blue buff and coming down for a gank. They have done fantastically to be able to control this jinx. Yeah, and Macau dodges away from that Glitter Lance's tower. Very, very low. Lex completely out of mana. Wants to go back. So they're going to pick up two turrets nearly simultaneously with Lex having to go back as well as uh, in the mid lane. Kira left the lane. So that's top, uh, middle and bottom going down. Top also looking to follow. Ins all of a sudden flick a switch and they're going to pick up everything. Yeah, and their lane control has been fantastic here as well. You can see Turret goes down on the bottom side. Joxer actually gets credit for that one. Macau wanting to continue this as Smurf actually oh, picks up the blue nailed. buff. There's the... Oh my goodness, the Soul Shackle's doing a whole lot of damage. Super Mega Death Rocket just into the backside of this Ince lineup, and they are going to be able to get out of there. Of course, Living Artillery is going to deter Smurf from coming any further. But Ince nearly take down three turrets simultaneously. That was just fantastic timing in the entirety of the lineup. All of a sudden, they've got a gold lead as well. So, hard random ball in their court. They need to start making something happen with what is like a weird pick comp. I actually don't even like know what their composition does. It's kind of double AD with an AP top laner with not very many tanks and a confusing amount of magic damage. Yeah, it is quite strange. Kira, though, does a lot of damage, as you can see, but so does Macau. Rocket jumping on top of Kira here. Didn't ult through as the explosive shot is going to explode and do a whole heck of a lot of damage, but Kira unable to die from it. So Int's not going to be able to get their first kill. Smurf has pushed up this top wave, and they're going to send Macau up to deal with it. Yeah, so they're sending the Tristana into the top lane without Dragon up to just push down the last outer turret. Wow, Smurf needs to be careful because... There are two people coming up here, and I don't think you can win the 2v1. Yeah, I have a storm under the turret there as well to deter Smurf from continuing on that one, and Macau just going to continue doing exactly what it was doing before. Oh my goodness, that True Shot Barrage did a heck of a lot of damage. Yeah, True Shot Barrage is a very good, uh, I guess, ability if you can fire it without hitting creeps. As soon as you hit the creeps, as you see the loot and Echo now finished up for Tokka, so he's just able to shove out any wave. Uh, yeah, if you hit creeps, it does a lot less damage, but if you get a champion first time through, it does a ridiculous amount of burst. Yeah, that's why you like to use it first shot through a team fight as well. Also gives you five stacks of your passive generally if you're mm -hmm. doing that. If you want to learn some Ezreal play. Of course, he hasn't been around for very long. Oh, wait. Revolta able to take down his red buff here. Macau continuing to push down on the top side. Smurf has a lot of wave clear, though. It might be difficult for this Tristana to make it to the turret.
Yeah, it certainly might be because you can just drop the, especially with 40% CDR coming through already from Smurf, just drop the pull on the back line, take out all the caster creeps, and you can just, yeah, as you see up there, not really worried too much about CSing because his pull does it for him. Yeah, cannon creep not going to be taken down, but pretty close. True Shot Barrage Again, doesn't find Tokers that time. fired up the mid lane. Yeah, Kira's just using that one on cooldown. Yeah, just using it to shove out, and why not? He's going to be able to grab the mid lane turret, it looks like, for his troubles as it goes down. And Tokers needs to be careful. Kira does a lot of consistent damage. Yeah, and Tokers needs to hit all of his skill shots if he's going to do the same. Very hard to do that against Ezreal, though, especially if he has flash. He doesn't. But he has the E, of course, as well, to be able to get him in and out of danger. And now we see maybe Hard Random starting to take some control of the map back. They're even pushing in the bottom lane. Whoa, Kira's in trouble. He is. Arcane Shift is going to get him to relative safety, but these ults are doing so much work. Tokers with the explosion, and they may be able to transition into this inner turret. And look at the damage coming through from Macau. The explosive shot's going to explode, and man, turrets last no time at all coming through from the ins lineup. Yeah, they certainly don't. Tristana wrecks through them, and they're able to pick up a kill on the mid laner. You just see the strength of AP Cogmore in the current meta, able to completely take over the mid game, because he gets his power spike so much easier. No longer do you need the tier, some mana regen, as well as the Rhylize Crystal Scepter. You just go into a very good poke item in the Lunum Deco, and you're pretty much done with your build. Yeah, actually, Super Mega Death Rocket, I believe, Missed was, everything. Yeah, it was fired. So it was a decent attempt, but not going to find anyone. Well, the thing Spell about Super Mega Death Rocket, you have to fire it into someone, then it explodes and steals Dragon for you. you kind of like Ash Arrow. Yeah, exactly like Ash Arrow. Mm. But it does, actually does damage. Hey, Chanted Chris Laro does damage, mate. If you build her AP. <laughs> does it do AP damage? Yeah. That's what AP Ash is all about, my friend. It's the cooldown reduction. AP and you sit in the base. It's <laughs> throwing arrows. Uh, it's like a bad carpus. If you think about it. No? I don't know. I'm <laughs> speechless. <laughs> I just <laughs> didn't know that was a thing. No, it's, it's not a thing. I promise you it's not a thing. Don't you worry. It's not like you've missed a memo. <laughs> oh, dear. But it does work, theoretically. As Kira's actually going to find Revolta here in the mid lane. Gets explosive cast back here as well. It's the Rek'Sai finally going to fall down. Yang gets ignored, thank goodness, as he's so tanky. Hard random, they do pick up the jungle. A Smurf might be in trouble, as Jocks are actually going to flash <laughs> and monsoon him over the wall. Yeah, flash is in, saves him. Smurf was like, thank God I didn't have to use my flash. Yeah, you're welcome. And I fat fingered my uh, black shield, otherwise I would have been in some trouble. <laughs> yeah, hard random though, trying to answer the push from the mid lane as the barrel is we down there. We mentioned the synergy between Kira and Lex being able to just throw that W from Ezreal across the Jinx and get all the attack speed up. And you saw right there, they make pretty quick work of turrets themselves. Yeah, well, both of these lineups really able to tear through these turrets. And late game team fights, it's going to be one win and they're going to be able to take the base, either team. Yeah, exactly right. And you see Lex able to push up there. He's going for a Phantom Dancer as the next item. You would have to assume with that dagger, although it could just be boots into a Static Shiv as well. The Transform now coming through from the Mura Manor. And the top turret will fall as Revolta going on a solo mission for a blue buff. Yeah, Tremacense does let him know that there are a billion people hanging around here. Dark Binding finds Yang, does next to no damage. So he's got a whole lot of health at this stage. Zap's going to find Tokas as Revolta. He's not quite Do you know tanky who does damage? Here. Kira, he is an absolute monster at this point in the game, although he has been caught now. That was an overly aggressive arcane shift there. Was forced to use the flash to get out of there, and the cleanse, in fact. Sometimes it's just about sending a message. And oh, message sent. He wants was to received. kill people. Most definitely. Well, he wants to throw out mystic shots and not find any targets. Maybe that's what the message he was sending. Oh, I'm not entirely wow. sure. Poor Kira. Having a good game so far. 2, 1, and 0. Getting trash talked by Atlas <laughs> on, the at on the desk. That is not true. I was just stating what had happened. Okay. His bottom lane in a turret is under fire by the creeps, though. Lex was sent down there. Ince, though, unable to really capitalize on the fact that they had a decent minion wave pushing into the bottom side. And now we're just going to be buying items. Revolta actually may get taken down by that True Shot Barrage. But no, not going to happen this time. 
And we see sl quite a slow game coming through here, Atlas Dragon. Has been taken twice by N, so they've got that under control for now. Gold's completely even. Gold very even here. Turrets, there's one in favor for the Brazilian lineup, so they're doing well, and they scale. Possibly even two. Yeah, it is two. They got, oh, they got the tier two mid lane one. So they scale very well into the late game. You've got a Tristana, you've got an AP Cogmore, who just gets better with every single one of his items. There really is not an item threshold with Cogmore after you get your Luden's Echo. Just every other item makes you significantly better. Yeah, and these are sort of the, the two classic hyper carries, aren't they? Really? Yeah, it certainly is. And Jinx versus uh, Tristana, two very big hyper carries. I'm not going to call it classic because played Jinx, since season so one. Jinx, very recent to me. <laughs> Still don't yep. know exactly what she does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she doesn't have an AP ratio on her ultimate. <laughs> she sport, does. Just it. letting you know. As we see a shove coming through from Symphony in this mid lane, trying to get the turret down. Flex actually dodges out of the way of that Essence Flex, it looks Whoa. like. And Smurf takes half of his health and has to scurry away now from Toka's, what, two abilities? Yep, two abilities. That was Voidus and the Living Artillery. Revolts are going to get slowed down there, but Glitter Lance doesn't find him. Yang actually looking for the terror, uh, the, the flank here. Thought he used the teleport, didn't actually. As the Maokai sort of walks in and goes, oh, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. We'll get out. Yeah, Kira still doing some damage here. As Lex going oh, to deal Macau. with a side creep wave. And Macau, he's on top of a ward. Needs to be They're very collapsing careful. on him, though. Chompers land after it comes through. Symphony completely whiffs the ultimate. But Macau might be able to get out. Super Mega Death Rocket is flashed here as Buster Shot hasn't been used. And Symphony is a very slow, slow fat man. Yeah, he certainly is, especially with no mana. And off the back of that, hard random are going to lose their bottom lane That was lane a turret. free kill, though. That should have been a free kill. Yeah, but still turret for yeah, kill. Yeah, really even good then for Ince. It goes well for Ince, but they didn't get the kill. So it goes even better. Yeah. A little bit unfortunate there for hard random, but they are going to be able to take a consolation turret here in the top lane, almost equalizing that one out. And they are going to take the gold lead for it. Kira able to get a ward over there as well. But only one more inner turret remaining here for the Brazilian lineup. They are with a lot of map control at this stage of the game. Seven sec seconds until the dragon is up. And the movement speed going to be helping them out a whole lot as far as moving around this map with that third dragon. And Cogmore just benefits so much from movement speed. It's the w one of the reasons why Luden's Echo is such an important oh, item wow. on him as well. You throw in the fact that a third dragon, he's not going to be able to be avoided by anyone. Probably doesn't even need the Rylize at that stage. Yeah, and is he going to be going for the Rylize, or is this potentially the Leandri's Torment that he's picking up next item? Yeah, it could be potentially the Leandri's there, just for some more flat penetration to come through. As we might have a fight, Yang's being caught out a little bit. Yeah, he's very, very tanky, though. As now it's the standoff. Hard random. They have got the dragon aggro. The problem with hard random AOE. is they really don't have that much engage as it's gone down. Yeah, Zap tried to come through, but Macau's actually going to lock that one down. Third dragon here for Ince is hard random, unable to really get any engages off. And True Shot Barrage not able to steal that one away. Yeah, so let's take a look at hard random's team comp. Unless they get a really good bind or a flank coming through from Symphony, they just don't have the hard engage you need to deal with Tokas's uh, AP Cogmore right now. No one can get on top of him, and we've already seen how much damage he does. What that means? This Tristana has just been split pushing all game. Macau able to just crush through the waves and then, if left unattended, go and grab some turrets for herself as well. So there's really no chance for them to fight here, although they do try and make one. Yeah, Kira looking for it. Symphony actually flashes in. Nice explosive cast gets two members. Jockstar very, very low. Super Mega Death Rocket nets himself a kill and hard random. They've got Revolta sort of caught in no man's land, but they're not going to chase after him. Voidus is going to find Lex half of his health down as True Shot Barrage is going to get dodged out of the way of Ince. Now trying to defend this inhibitor turret as the minions do head up there. Macau shoots the last one in the face and there's no minions left. Yeah, exactly right. And look what they had to burn to get it there. If Jockstar had have altered before he flashed as well, wouldn't even have been a kill. So in the end, hard random, they force they get something, but they're not going to be able to push in on this turret. Oh, wow. Kira takes a whole lot from that boy who's living artillery combo. Symphony not going to find the barrel there as well. Dark Binding goes wide and Ince now looking for some form of engage. Mystic Shot finds Revolta. Revolta sort of getting poked out on his way down this lane. Macau looking for something as well. Dark Binding again going to go wide. 
And our ins line up now on the offensive. Yeah, so even though hard random, they're technically up, they're behind in dragons quite significantly. They just can't start a favorable fight because there is no way, especially now that Gragas' flash is on cooldown, Whoa, this that they can wave. win it. And they look like they might even go for a Baron? No, they're just trying to contest the blue once again. Yeah, not going to be happening though, as blue is going to fall to Smurf. And this top wave is going to be taken down to drop barrage. Going to come through. So they did start it up. They have yeah. intention to do Baron, which I think is a little bit dangerous. They've got a very good scaling lineup. There's no engage coming through from hard random. Just continue to control minion waves with Mikau. Push around the map. Get your Cogmore, who now is going towards that Leandris, as well as your uh, Tristana to super late game. And there's no one to really deal with Maokai. Cogmore is just going to get stronger and stronger, and you just roll over there with your Siege composition. I think that Hard Random actually are the ones that need to force here. I'm surprised it's not them trying to uh, posture around Baron, posture around Dragon, and force those objectives, because without a major objective up on the map, they just can't get a winning team fight. Yeah, no, they've been relying on Symphony a little bit for that, to try and get an explosive cask into a team fight that they like, but... You're exactly right. It hasn't really been working out here for Hard Random. But that's their only tool. They've got an explosive cast. That is and the Dark Vining maybe. Yeah, but that's not even really a hard engage tool. That's a pick tool. Ah, right. So as far as hard engage goes, they've got legitimately Nothing. Symphony. Yeah, or Symphony. Yeah. Well, we'll see whether they can make something happen. This is, of course, League of Legends. Anything can happen on the Rift as... Is going to be the split push here for Yang. The, I'm actually the three pushing out. I'm surprised Symphony hasn't picked up. Uh, what's the blue enchant on boots that gives you increased flash? Oh, yeah. Distortion. The distortion. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he really hasn't gone distortion if that is the case. Because they seem to recognize as well that they can't hard engage without Symphony's flash. So just get the distortion enchant. It's going to allow you to get much more flashes in there, have it available with the increased cooldown coming through. Oh, and you can see wow. exactly what happens when they try and siege up. Yeah, Trisha Barrage does do a fair bit of damage here as Dark Binding once again. Not going to find a target. Explosive shot does knock the Maokai out of there, stopping a lot of the engaged knock-up. Not going to come through onto Smurf with that Dark... with the Black Shield, sorry. As it is going to get broken. And look at the burst damage from Tokers. Super Mega Death Rocket throw again onto Jockster. Takes out the support. Hard random. Now with a 5v4 situation, thinking about going for something, but they're getting poked down. And as soon as Tokers isn't engaged on, he just gets so much work done in the back line that they can't do anything. Yeah, exactly right. And Jockster really needs to calm down, hold his horses on these engages, because realistically, they were winning that until he went up to the front, because look how much damage this AP Cogmore currently does. Yeah, it's disgusting. Macau, though, actually takes a fair bit there as well as Kira down here. Living Artillery not going to find anyone as the Void is just going to destroy the river. I don't why it's continue to try and force Baron. It just is very confusing. Oh, Some of the bats, the bats now stopped as well. So, realistically, Hard Random now need to go get some positioning around this Dragon area, although now they're starting up the Baron? What is going on? They're, they've started here. Symphony very, very low as the Ward here in the back of the pit is going to spot out exactly what's going on. Revolta is able to get the 50-50 smite potentially, and Symphony may just die to the Baron as Ince, they're gonna now take the position, and they know that Symphony's low. They might be able to just turn on the Baron here themselves. Yeah, it certainly looks like that's what they might be able to do, but they don't go for it. And both teams, it's 31 minutes in the game, and you haven't got a tank. It's Make up your melons. Baron. Oh. They're going for it again. My goodness. The Baron Trap once again. Macau taking a lot of damage here. Righteous Glory pops. Oh, there's the W in from Yang. And Kira, he's been picked and now he's dead. Yeah, so they're able to get a kill off it at least. Smurf, extremely low, doesn't have the teleport either. They've started it up another time. This time oh it will goodness. probably go to end because there's no uh, mid laner coming through for hard random. Although, don't, don't quote me on that. Yeah, Super Mega Death Rocket is available here as well as Symphony. They're looking for something explosive. Cast going to do some work here as Tokas, completely unharassed in the back, is able to take down Smurf Symphony. Very low wild growth from Demonko comes through, but our Ince lineup just wrecking this team fight. Lex the only one alive. Kira about to respawn as now Cogmore just trying to zone away the AD carry and Ince. They'll get the Baron and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, it certainly looks to be the case. And already they had a great siege composition. True Trap Barrage on its way. Will it find it? No, not even close. 
They actually stopped damage there, I think, as it came over reward. Maybe not. That would have been cute. Let's just say they did. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, and Powered Recall going to get them back to base here at the same time. It is going to be... The Randy Wins Omen completed for Yang is going towards that Frozen Heart now. It's an interesting choice here. You do generally want to get as much cooldown reduction early as you possibly can. Why would Yang have gone for the Randy Wins instead of the Frozen Heart? Yeah, I don't know. It just maybe values the attack speed, uh, the slow onto Jinx a little bit more. Of course, she hasn't got a gap closer. Yeah, so true. being able to get in there, get your team to catch up with that Righteous Glory as well as the Randy Wins Omen as... Wow, Kira. Sneaky what maneuver. And Symphony, they might be able to take this one out. They do. It's actually going to be the rocket over the back of the wall. And that was so sneaky by Hard Random. Yeah, it certainly was. So they're able to jump in there, grab it. Of course, Macau was in base, so it wasn't really a fight that Ince wanted to take. And finally, a Dragon is picked up here. Tokas, he's got a Void Staff now and is looking extremely menacing. Only really needs one more item which you assume would be a Rylize, although it might also just be a death cap to come through to finish that one off. Yeah, it can finish the Leandris, of course, but I'd like to see a death cap. Just make sure that he's got as much AP as possible. Get these living artilleries to be ripping through the lineup of hard random. Ceres Embrace is there as well, so a little bit more healthy as Kira, again, with a very aggressive arcane ship. Kira's Ezreal. He's got balls, man. Yeah, it certainly does, and they oh tear through the Oh my goodness. Turret. Lex took so much damage from that explosive shot as well. That was massive. And there's no engage to come through. It also looks like Smurf in the top lane on that this Morgana isn't going for a Zonya's Hourglass. So even if they get dove now, I don't know if he can survive long enough to get off the ult they need to stop the dive. Going for maybe a Luden's Echo, which is just mind-boggling boggling for a... Morgana don't want to pick that one up. Yeah, it doesn't even have a Void Staff. You would have thought maybe that would be an option. And don't get me stash. wrong. I'm the biggest fan of Luden's Echo. I think it is a very good item in a lot of builds. It's just when you need anti-dive, the Zonya is going to be... Oh, wow. my goodness. This is why you like Luden's Echo spawn, because it is doing disgusting amounts of damage. The inhibitor is going to follow as well here as Dark Binding again. Going to pick the gap through this team. True Shot Barrage going to do the same in Ince. They take the inhib and they'll be able to back away. Yeah, and all of a sudden there's no hard engage to come through from hard random, so they just can't even start a fight, let alone win one. Inter just going to rotate around the map, force them off structures with Tokas, take them with Macau, and what a good siege comp coming through here for INTZ. Yeah, and it looks like just champion select working out fantastically well here for the Brazilian lineup. This siege comp has been working so beautifully, and despite having an awful start, you can see, look at that, um, that living artillery. Lex, wow. he has to get out. Oh, and Kira as well. He's on Ezreal, that one of the slipperiest champions in the game. And Tokas still able to land these ones. This AP Cogmore is looking so frightening and so frustrating. Yeah, it certainly is. And now you have to wonder why f the first time around they played the Zerath. If they've got an AP Cogmore up their sleeve, pretty much good Zerath at this part of the game, just because Zerath uh -huh. doesn't deal with uh, tanks too well. And as you can see, Cogmore doesn't really care who's squishy or tanky at this point. Just chunking out everyone. So hard to engage on top of him because of that ooze. Yeah. Gets so much poke damage through as well. He's got fantastic peel coming through for his team. And there's really nothing Hard Random can do. Yeah, and Ince just easily take away two inhibitors there. In a turret the fell death in the top as well. side as well. So he's picked up another needlessly oh, large rod. I love it. And they've done it with less kills. So it's been 6-5 the entirety of the game. But they've always looked into control. They've controlled the objectives. They picked up the Baron. They were the one that started jockeying around it, even maybe prematurely. But they always had control over the Dragon area and always been up in structures. So they've done it not through better team fighting, just better strategical play. Yeah, and just better knowledge of when their comp is strong and how to use it. Yeah, exactly right. So last turret... In the top lane this time around, looking to seize that one out. Last turret, of course, apart from the Nexus turret. And oh, they there's go in. the flash from Symphony. Doesn't find the knockup on the body slammers. Symphony just getting torn apart. Macau, so much damage, gets the last hit in there as well. And the jungler falls down. The desperation play from Hard Random, not going to net them anything, is now the final inhibitor. Look at Yang goes for a ride there into the back line. Macau as well, jumping headlong into this fight. Tokas getting so much consistent damage as this Tristana ripping apart the Ezreal. The last auto attack on the fountain.
going to net them the game because these Nexus turrets, they cannot handle all of these auto attacks to come through from the Tristana. And game one going out to our Brazilian lineup. Yeah, they do it in 38 minutes and in pretty convincing fashion. So hard random need to 